three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with the Magic Brad Show. And I've got a friend, I believe she's probably on the West Coast. Her name is Summer, right, Summer? It is. Good day. I'm Summer Helene, and I am. I'm, ha- I'm hiding out on the West Coast right now. See, but you got an accent. I do. Originally, I'm from Sydney, Australia. See? My family's from Burnie, Tasmania. So we're from the littlest town, the littlest island at the bottom of the world. And the last name is, is it Helene? Helene. Oh, I did good, huh? You did very well. Nobody ever gets that. Well, my last name is Goodham. And if they spell it wrong, they can't say it. If they say it wrong, they can't spell it. And I just use Magic Brad. Be done with it. I like that. I think Magic Brad's the best way to go. It is. Let's everyone know how wonderful you are. Just a one word name like Prince and Elvis and Cher and Madonna and Magic Mike. (laughs) But I can't dance. Well, how long have you well, been in, in, in Los Angeles? I've been here since I was 16. I came over as a Victoria's Secret model when I was 16. And from there, I decided I wanted to be behind the camera, not in front of it. It turned out I didn't like the attention. <laughs> I wanted to be a Shakespearean actress, but that didn't pay very well. But it turned out modeling paid really well. I just didn't like kind of being oogled. So I got behind the camera and I was really good at it. I uh, had the help of um, the old president of Paramount and Lloyd Kaufman and uh, Ron Jeremy, of all people. I know was he's in trouble she, right now. Was the thing with the, the in front of the camera and was it people knowing who you are and seeing you and stuff like that too? Um, I got really well known for having this scream. I actually still don't own my scream. You can hear it when they do not scary farm ads, but it was bought by a company that I worked for. I sold it for very little money when I was 17 or 18. And I was taught by Felissa Rose and Jamie Lee Curtis. So I ended up with this great blood curdling scream. So I got very well known in the horror genre. And this guy came up to me at a club and grabbed me and kept trying to get me to scream for him. And I decided I didn't like this. This is not what I wanted to do with my life. I didn't, I didn't like, I'm, I'm not great with strangers touching me and that sort of thing. And, I'm okay, like at Comic-Con, I still speak over at Comic-Con and I tell people how to get their projects made into films or how to get their, um, uh, just how to get their content out there. And I don't mind that, like I love my Comic-Con crowd, but some of the people I meet outside of Comic-Con are psycho. I was doing really bad horror films. So the guys I met were like, live in their mother's basement where your face is a mask as they do their little cookie dance kind of guys. That was like, <laughs> that was who was into me. And that was enough for me to kind of go, you know, thank you very much. But I, I don't have the strength of character. Like God so bless, had, God bless you, actors. I just don't you, have that strength of character. You jumped on the other side of the camera. I did. And you have sort of I still love the industry. <laughs> Pardon? You have a knack for that, being able to kind of, like they do this thing, right? Oh, I'm not the artsy type. Um, no. I, it's funny. I went from being the you know kind of in front of the camera to um producing i'm the youngest executive ever in hollywood and i make people places and things famous so my whole job is marketing and distribution and what i do is i tell you if you want two hundred thousand more subscribers how to get that in a month if you want a million people to show up to your premiere how to do that so i'm very expensive but very, very good. I worked on things like Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2, though I didn't work on 3 because they gave it to Disney, which I strongly disagree with, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I spent a couple of years out in Hollywood. It's a totally different vibe out there. Yes. You know? I tell it people is. like a... on, on the East Coast, they tell you like it is, and that's how it is. In the Midwest, they never make a decision. And when you get out to the West Coast and specifically – the Los Angeles, Hollywood area, they tell you what they're going to do, but that's not what they do. See, I guess I found the opposite. I found people in entertainment to be like the, the most sharpshooting people you could possibly work with and the most insulting. Like I remember being on shoots where I'm like, I was 97 pounds. I'm getting yelled at for simultaneously being too fat and too thin. Like I don't have enough boobs and I don't have enough butt, but I'm still too fat. So. <laughs> Like it's, it's, I found them disgustingly honest. Um, I will say though, they'd sell their mother if it got them ratings. 
I know. I'd sell mine. Yeah, I remember um, going out there. It's a fascinating place out there. I remember I was walking through a park once, and I used to go to this coffee shop all the time. And I knew the way across the park. And one day I went out there, and there was this big, giant steel structure. And I thought, when did they build that? And I went and checked it out, and it, was, it wasn't real. It was made out of styrofoam, but it looked real. Yeah. And it was pretty fascinating how it just manifested in, overnight. <laughs> It does. Every, things do that. They'll pop up, disappear. They'll be set up for filming and disappear. Or they'll be set up for fun and disappear. I like that. I think I like the unpredictability. It's like magic. It is. It's Hollywood magic. Well, when you look at film and what we sell in the first place, what we sell isn't real. We're selling an idea mm -hmm. about something that hasn't been made yet that isn't real in the first place. So if we're selling a film, I'm selling you the idea of Hollywood more than I'm selling you a film, or I'm selling you the actor more than I'm selling you the film. And I find that fascinating because I feel we sell dreams. And when times are tough, like right now with quarantine, I mean, you know, we're stuck in, I do most, I do a lot of interviews, but I, these are the shoes I get to wear now, where usually it's six inch heels. Now I get to wear my bunnies to work. Well, you um, could put heels on the bunny, yeah. couldn't you? I could, I could put heels on the bunny, but I think if I showed up at work like that, I'd probably get fired. Just, just a small shot in the dark. <laughs> if I showed up at work with fluffies, I'd probably get fired. But I love, I love, I love entertainment. I love that people can lose themselves in it. And I think entertainment can make a difference. It's a great way to spread ideas. I mean, granted, I've done things like, you know, Paul Block, Mall Cop, Mall Cop. That's not like a great game changer there, but <laughs> you can, I think entertainment can change the world if it's allowed to. Have you been and to I the think, Magic Castle in Hollywood? I have not. I was invited a couple of times and I haven't been able to go yet. It's a pretty I fascinating magic, place because it's, it's got all sorts of little things that happen to you when you're in there. Like when you walk in, really? there's a bookcase and you got to say open sesame, then the bookcase opens up and you go into the bar and it's pretty magical space in there there's a lot of things going on so you should definitely go there i'll go check that out yeah. i'm kind of stuck i have uh, i have lupus so yeah. with the pandemic going around i have to be extra careful so i you know work i don't get to do the carpets like all the fun stuff we got to do before which was kind of the red carpets and the events and going places i get to be in my living room it's very exciting it's a new way to do it <laughs> that's the way that it, that's the way it works now it was great at first. I was like, oh, I only have to get dressed from the waist up. I get interviewed. Like, I can do all of this. Now I'm just sitting here going, get me out of here. Get me out. I know people are getting a little stir crazy. They so, are. Do you have any uh, current project you're working on that you can explain to us? Because I know there's a lot of uh, different bizarre things that happen in the movie. I spent a little time out there as working on some infomercials and just being able to be around the sets and all that stuff. It's pretty fascinating, all the different- It films. is. Well, we're really shut down for the most part right now. Everything. Uh, I was, yeah, I was supposed to go to was the Brazilian Film Festival, Spanish Film, Spanish Film Festival, my assistant's next to me. She's usually Hello. shouting stuff in my ear. Um, hi, Alexis. Uh, she was, I was invited to the Spanish Film Festival and they wouldn't let me on, go on an American passport. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm now a dual citizen. America is my, my home by choice. So I was like, oh, I can come on an Australian passport. They're like, oh, we can't let you in now that you've told us you live in America. I'm like, you invited me to come speak, bastards. But um, so uh, it's, it's, it's pretty rough right now. Most of the film industry is shut down. Um, we're buying content and putting it on like Netflix that we turned down two and three years ago because it was bad, really bad. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't pay for it then. Now we're paying 10 times more for it. So if you have existing content, now is the time to sell it. Contact someone in distribution and don't worry, you can overcharge the hell out of them because we are desperate. Am I going to get in trouble for saying that? We are not desperate. We will pay nothing, girl. <laughs> That's right. Hard yeah, no, bargain. We're, we're, yeah, girl. <laughs> we're really desperate. Well, it, it has all just changed. <laughs> I just talked with a magician friend of mine and there's an agent out there that represents some like a carrot top, you know that guy? Yeah, he's really nice, really funny, really funny. 
So they said that Las Vegas is basically nothing going on there too. All the shows no. are shut down. And I'm, my background's in the event industry and everybody's getting creative and they're doing shows via Zoom and charging people yep. via PayPal and just yep. doing whatever you can do to make it work until it opens back up. I think it's brilliant. I have a friend of mine that's a musician. He's out in Vegas as well. And he said it's just flatlined. But I have found that a lot of entertainers now are pushing on TikTok and pushing on different platforms, mm -hmm. which I think is brilliant. Because when I do, when I say I do like, so when I say social media marketing and distribution, my specialty is kind of online marketing. And the biggest stars you are going to see come up in the world now are going to be the people that use this pandemic to their advantage. I have a friend of mine, he's an MMA fighter. Mm -hmm. In like a month, he's just gone up hundreds of thousands because nobody has anything to watch. So if people know how to use um, Instagram Reels, which is just like a rip off of uh, TikTok, which is just a rip off of uh, Trilla. <laughs> but if you know how to use, if you know how to use these programs, right. you can come out of quarantine a star. So I've started consulting and doing that for different celebrities and different people and kind of telling them how to make quarantine work for them See, that's because refreshing. we're buying things off TikTok. That's refreshing that what? you get that because some people, they have this duality mindset that, well, seeing there's no events, I think I'll do nothing until it's over, but you can't, you got to try to do a hybrid and run them in parallel and take mm -hmm. advantage of all this online stuff. I believe that oh. what's going to happen with some of the stuff in Vegas is the, the showrooms are going to start charging real expensive you know, for a live. They'll have a star on the stage and they'll charge big ticket, you know, thousand, two thousand, five thousand dollars for a package for the, the VIPs to come to. And then they'll broadcast it out and charge people nine dollars and ninety five cents. Like that's a, an excellent like a, idea. A pay I mean, a truly, thing. truly excellent idea. Everybody's got to stay far to away. It. So you got these big, mm -hmm. big rooms. You can't people put people shoulder to shoulder. So why not? Make it parties that spread them out and do it that way. Yeah, that's what I think. I think it's an excellent idea because that's what's happening right now in Minneapolis. I've got a trade show that I did in March, and then this thing came along and stopped all the events, and there's none of the venues are open, so everybody just jumped online. But it's going to open up eventually. You know, eventually we get back to somewhat of normal. I think it's going to change the world in oh, a pretty fundamental totally way. Totally. I can tell by just walking around the lake and people kind of part ways when they're going past each other. They don't want to get too close and it's going to be that way. But I, but I think it's going to change the entertainment industry in a huge, in, in like a profound way. Like yeah. I said, the biggest stars in the world now are going to come off of TikTok. Uh, Instagram's had its time. Instagram's over. Um, Facebook's had its time. Facebook, like once your grandma gets on a platform, the platform's over. <laughs> so um, sorry, it's, it's true like watch your grandma sorry, on it. grandma. Like, sorry grandma my grandma is <laughs> oh my god my grandma's on it I'm sorry grandma but <laughs> um I see like the Gen Z is like for for me my millennial like for the millennials for my generation it was Instagram um and for Gen Z it's TikTok and so then you know millennials jump on TikTok and kind of get involved and you've got gen x jump on and you know everyone kind of is moving where the where the gen z is moving that's how it works so you just watch for where the next platform gen z runs to is do, do you think that some of these uh, new generation gen z type people they're gonna kind of be their own production they'll be their own company uh, in front of the camera behind the camera their own staff they'll kind of build their own thing well i think that was already done the millennials did it once um once YouTube became a thing, they did it on YouTube. They did it on Insta. They, I mean, you have people now that moved in together, living in houses together, producing their own content for YouTube, for Insta and for TikTok. And that's the, and the millennials kind of already are doing that. I think Gen Z is more collaborative. I see Gen Z working together far better than, than the millennials did. Once uh, the internet opened up, it's like the wild west. So you had the millennials, like my gen, kind of jump on and go, oh, we can do this, or we can do that, or we can do this, but I want to do it my way. And I find Gen Z far more collaborative. No, that's kind of what I mean. They have their own little clan, their own little company of mm -hmm. people, and they yes, understand yes. that why don't we create a little syndicate and make this go a lot faster? I think they will. I think Gen Z is very, very smart. 
I think you got they your are... finger on the pulse of the industry, don't you? A little bit. That's why they hired me. <laughs> um, I think politically, socially, Gen Z is ahead. But if you want to know what is going to be popular, ask a 13 year old girl. Okay. I don't know where to find one of those, probably on TikTok. Uh, yeah, that's, I, I, you can find them on TikTok. You can find them on Wishbone, um, a lot of places, but I strongly suggest, I made the mistake of writing in how to talk to 13 year old girls on the internet. Don't do that. <laughs> Cause that, you get warnings, you end up on lists. Yep. You totally get it. <laughs> so I, I skip like, over that. Don't so do I'm, that. <laughs> I'm 63 and married, so I don't need to find uh, <laughs> little girls. Yeah, don't, don't go hunting for girls online. I've gotten myself in trouble doing that, but it is, I think the, I think stars today have transcended where it used to be a certain age group and a certain look and a certain everything. Now you can be any age, you can be any look, but you have to know how to tap in. And that's what makes a difference. And I found um, since I've been taking time away from work, uh, working on set um, and just kind of consulting more, you know, I still consult for uh, Paramount's My Parents Studio. So I still do my consultations for them and I do consultations privately for entertainers. And I find the same thing across the board that nothing's really changed. We're looking for the same thing we've always looked for, which is a way to pull ourselves out of our own lives and escape for a minute. And it can be done, you know, Quibi was a good idea, a little behind the ball, but Quibi was a good idea. Like here's a whole movie in eight minutes. It's not gonna do great, but whatever. Um, but if you have someone that can give original content, the reason that TikTok does so well is it's not contrived like Instagram, where everyone's like, look, I'm gorgeous. It's just <laughs> me on the beach. Instagram's just, you know, chicks holding their boobs, where, when you get on TikTok, it's people, it's kids talking politics, it's people doing skits. It's so, it's what, it's what Vine and YouTube used to be before mm -hmm. Vine got destroyed and YouTube became a corporate ass. I love you, YouTube. I'm kidding. <laughs> Everything's different. Everybody's got their opinions. Yeah. So the people that you, you consult for, is there any specific, um, and the reason I'm asking this is because when I do this video, I kind of propagate it out and use the right words and things in there so that people find it. What type of person are you looking for? Like the, the newbie that's trying to get into the entertainment industry? Or are you looking for people that are, have been in it and need, need to know how the Gen Yers are, or Gen Zers are doing it? Both. I only take, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. So because I've worked for the studios for so long, I still work on large film projects and do their consulting. So when I do private consulting, I do it for one of two reasons. I do it for political movements that I believe in, uh, entertainers that are doing a good thing or wanting to, like the uh, MMA fighter I was talking about, started a nonprofit with his mother to give free martial arts to everyone. So obviously that was a gig I took. Um, I'm, I select people based on who they are and how I think they'll do. I've never had a flop. I've never made a bet that was wrong. That's my job. <laughs> my job is to guess what's going to be popular and be right. So when I take someone, it ha they have to fit the criteria of, I got to like them. I got to believe in what they're doing and why. And I have to know they're going to succeed. Okay. So pretty much anybody can kind of throw their hat in the ring if they want to have yeah. something happen out there. And then you get to pick and choose whether they're, yeah. yeah, but I take really no point in, if someone's not going to make it. What's the point of spending too much time anyways? You know, right? Well, it's, it's not about that. I found, and it's something my old boss told me. Uh, he was the president of ICOM and the president of Paramount, and I was terrified of him. Uh, wonderful man, but he's definitely in hell looking up at me smiling. He was very good to me, but awful man. Threw a stapler <laughs> once that a director missed, hit me in the head with it, yelled at me for not ducking, made me give him back the stapler so he could throw it again really old school Hollywood guy. Um, but he Hallelujah, said it's not Hollywood. Yeah, pretty much. Like <laughs> he was, if you made a bad caricature of an overweight, angry 90 year old dude throwing staplers, that was my boss. Like I watched Tropic Thunder and Tom Cruise's character. If he was older, I was like, Oh my God, it's Paul. Um, so he was wonderful and I loved him and he was good to me, but he, used to say it's not the people that have made it that are assholes excuse my language 
it's the people that think they have and are trying to show you that they have. So if somebody is now trying to put on airs and go, this is what I have and this is what I can do and da 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 da, I look at them and go, you're not going to go any further, buddy. Hollywood's collaborative. We got to work together. I may not know you, but I know someone that does. It's a very, very small community. Yep. There are 100,000 people thereabouts working at any given time, and it's always the same. The reason we work with the same people over and over again is because if I'm making a $100 million bet, I'm betting on someone I know. And it goes the same way when you are looking at bringing someone in. If you hire an assistant or you bring someone in or you bring in an intern, whatever they do, you're responsible for. If I put my name on someone to help them get big and they don't fit in that circle, it ain't going to work. Not only are they going to fail because no one's going to want to work with them, it's going to make me look like an ass. And also, I don't want to promote somebody that wants to step on other people. I think we need more people of color. We need more women. Like I'm literally the only woman that does my job. That's it. I'm it at any studio. So eh, I think we need more women. I think we need definitely more people of color and we need, we just need people to get along. Like we work 18, 20 hours a day. It's a lot. And we're betting a lot of other people's money. And if you can't fit in, we kind of, stick to our own. So I like to promote people I, that have a good idea, that have something new to share and are good people. I totally agree with it. It's, uh, to collaborate rather than compete, just makes it exactly. easier. Exactly. So also I end up <laughs> doing like half of them pro bono because they hire me and they can't afford me. And I'm like, but I really like what you're doing. Okay, I'll do it anyway. <laughs> like, I get, so I get the industry to pay me and like half the people I work with outside yeah, so I screw myself a little bit, but I like good people. Well, I'm sure good people like you too. So let, share with me how they get a hold of you if they want, if they listen to this and they go, that's interesting. I need to connect with her. How do they find you? Um, Summer Helene on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. The chances are, though, you get my assistant. She's the one that answers everything. Sure. Um, you just, if you can talk her into getting through to me, you can get through to me. But you can find me there or you can go to uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'm, I'm Summer Helene on everything. S-U-M-M-E-R-H-E-L-E-N-E. -E. Um, Google me. I'm, <laughs> I'm not will, hard to find. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not that. hard to find. I will put that in the little link that I put out there. So <laughs> I appreciate you taking the time. I'm going to get to work and beam this up the universe. And then I will get a copy to you. And if you could share it, that's how we get the likes. Absolutely. And I will say thank you for telling me about the Magic Castle. I'm absolutely going to check that out. Okie dokie. Thanks, Summer. All right. Good night. Peace.